Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, each one. Um, I am honored to be releasing the book. It's called The Book That Made Your World, How the Bible Created the Soul of Western Civilization. Technically, it's released tomorrow in America, but I'm glad that you are the first. Uh, a few months ago, The Economist published a Pew Research on state of hope in different cultures, and to their surprise discovery, Europeans had less hope than many other cultures, such as India, China, uh, or Latin America, Europeans had a less hope. That is interesting for someone like me from India, because we uh, always thought of the West in terms of a culture of optimism. The iconic picture was Lawrence of Arabia. He is fighting a city which is behind us the desert, in front of the, it is the ocean with guns that no ship, ships can come and take the city. He decides to come from behind, crossing the desert, uh, no one in his, none of his bosses believe that it can be done because it has never been done. He mobilizes an army of tri- uh, 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 Arab tribes. And there are two young people who try to kill him, and they should have been killed, but he co-ops them into his army. And as uh, they successfully cross the uh, desert in camels and horses, Uh, When they reach to the edge of the city, he finds that one of the young men is missing. He decides to go back to find that man who had tried to uh, save his life, but he'd become too fatigued, fallen off his horse. Uh, All the tribal chiefs think that he is crazy risking his life going back into the desert to find this man, so the tribal chiefs argue with him that it was written that he should die. He tried to take your life. And Lawrence says, nothing is written. He goes back, finds him, brings him, and conquers the city. Now, that, that was the, uh, a clash of worldviews. It is written. Nothing is written. We can shape our own destiny. That was modern Europe. Uh, Cochrane, in his book, Christianity and Classical Civilization, he shows that the gods of fortune, fate, destiny, etc., had been defeated uh, in the very beginning of Christian invasion of Europe. Uh, but this DNA of optimism of the West was really written by the Italian Christian humanists, uh, beginning with Petrarch and Salutati and Lorenzo Valla and Pico della Merendola, the, the idea of the dignity of man was that man is made in the image of a God who is free. Uh, Therefore, because God is free, he is not bound by the laws of nature. He can change. He can change history. Uh, You are a slave in Egypt, but tomorrow you can be free across uh, the um, uh, Red Sea first and then across the Jordan into a land flowing with milk and honey. Future can be better because God is free and you are made in his image. Therefore, there aren't gods of fortune and fate. Uh, Petrarch begins to struggle with the question of the role fortune plays in human life, and that whole tradition culminates in uh, uh, writing hope into the very DNA of modern Europe. But that hope, which was biblical hope, Uh, which I begin to look at in the first chapter from Bach to Cobain. Cobain was the uh, lead singer of uh, rock band uh, Nirvana, and his album, Nevermind, uh, displaced Michael Jackson, becoming number one. But Cobain committed suicide uh, in 1984, and I am starting my study from Bach to Cobain, where both Bach and Cobain lost their parents when they were nine years old. Uh, Bach to uh, death, Bach's parents died, and Cobain's parents to divorce, and how uh, that his, uh, his conversion to Buddhism, which is really conversion to nihilism, there is no God out there, there is uh, nothingness, 
nothingness is the ultimate reality. Nothingness does nothing. It cannot allow you to sing joy to the world. It cannot uh, allow you to sing, oh, come all you faithful, joyful and triumphant, uh, because God has intervened in human history. So that whole uh, uh, using music as an entry point into the soul of Western civilization, I begin to look in this book on how that hope was written and how that hope was lost. Once it was secularized that without God, man can change his destiny and create utopia, uh, th that uh, modernism, from modern age to modernism, or secularization of hope, ended up with pessimism because the secular hope went up in the mushroom clouds over Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And man is not as good as we thought he is. So the First and Second World War, the rise of Nazism, communism, etc., destroyed uh, secular hope and American evangelicalism picked up this secular pessimism that developed in Europe and baptized it with biblical verses with the late great planet Earth eschatology uh, where uh, American evangelicalism and American eschatology became the message of pessimism. American church kept saying, the leaders kept saying to their congregation, you give us your billions of dollars and we will take it to spread the light all over the world, but be sure as we spread the light, darkness will keep growing. The world will become from bad to worse until Jesus comes back, everything is destroyed, and you are raptured. So during the last hundred years, the only optimistic movement that really developed in America was the New Age movement, which said that you can become God and uh, you can create utopia. That, of course, also died, but essentially the philosophical foundations of hope. Hope is a matter of philosophy, not your mood and not your chemistry, but your theology. Those foundations came from the Bible, and they were destroyed by secularism and secularization, and uh, you are yet to recover, and you have to, uh, in order to recover, you have to go beyond uh, or the 20th century back to your history, and that is what something that this book is doing. I'll have to stop, leave that question of hope there and uh, discuss what made the West uh, what it became. Um, in 1981, two of the most creative minds in Hollywood, uh, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas, came together to uh, make a super hit movie. The Nazis, this is sec set during the Second World War, the Nazis are looking for the lost Ark of the Covenant. This is the wooden chest that Moses made in the wilderness and covered it with gold, a gold-covered wooden chest. And so Nazis are looking because they believe that if they can find the Ark of the Covenant, their armies will become invincible. The Pentagon begins to panic and hires an archaeologist to find the Ark, the chest, first. He does find it and um, launches the successful Indiana Jones franchise and a deep interest in occult uh, in the culture. Now, the interesting bit of history is that, in fact, Germany had found the Ark of the Covenant much before anybody else. That's where the Reformation began, and that was the discovery of the Ark of the Covenant, that Ark was made for the two tablets of stone in which, on which the finger of God had inscribed the Ten Commandments. So the Ark was made for those Ten Commandments. And Moses, when he made the tabernacle, he put the Ten Commandments into the holiest of holy. When Solomon, 400 years later, uh, David, 400 years later, builds the tabernacle, and then Solomon, his son, builds the temple. The ark is put, the, tab, the law of God is put into the heart of the nation. That was the secret of the greatness of Western civilization, among other things. The fact that here are a bunch of slaves illiterate, 
and God gives them a written text. The finger of God has inscribed the law of God. If God has given a written text, it means that you have got to learn to read. And it, if you are to write that law into your doorposts and into your heart, you have to learn to write. So the synagogues, temple, become the centers of learning where you learn to read and write. Therefore, Jesus, a carpenter, uh, can read because you're supposed to read the law of God if you're going to meditate upon it day and night. Now, that was also the source of the West's discovery of truth. The Ten Commandments begins with God saying that uh, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the house of slavery, out of Egypt. Therefore, you shall have no other gods beside me. You know the truth. Moses didn't have an army. He had no liberation theology. It was I who liberated you from Egypt, took you out of the Red Sea and the Jordan. Um, at that point, only out of the Red Sea. They are still at Sinai. You know, you've heard me. I've come on this mountain. Because you know the truth, you must believe that which is true. And that's what Jesus asked his disciples to do. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall become storytellers. No, no, you shall become witnesses. A witness is one who describes what is true. The gospel didn't win Europe because the evangelists were great storytellers, but the gospel won Europe uh, because Europe had given up faith and truth. As Jesus stands before Pilate, Jesus says, for this reason I was born, for this purpose I came into this world, to bear witness to the truth. Pilate has an incredible opportunity. He could say to the Jews that, look, I've never met anybody who knows the truth, so we'll postpone the trial for two, three days, and I'll, uh, after, for the Passover, I'll sit and listen to what is truth, uh, learn from him, and then we can hang him. But he has no interest in it, because for 300 years... Uh, Greek or Roman world had given up confidence that the human mind can know the truth. If our philosophers, poets don't know the truth, how can this carpenter know the truth? Pilate has no time, time for this nonsense. But what happens when you no longer pursue truth, seek truth, believe truth? Pilate answers that question. He says to Jesus, if uh, you won't talk to me, don't you realize that I have the power to crucify you or to set you free? Wait a minute. You are the chief justice of the Supreme Court of Israel. You have just, public, just now publicly declared that there is no basis for a charge against this man. He is innocent. Then do you have the power to crucify an innocent man? He did. If nobody knows the truth, truth has no authority. Where does power reside? Power resides with whoever has power. The thesis of this book is that America and Europe are in a free fall, and I, let me use America as it's a better example, because both the wings of the American eagle have been clipped. Michael Novak, a Roman Catholic a uh, scholar wrote a book on two wings, humble faith and common sense at America's founding. Humble, by humble faith, he meant the Protestant faith in the Bible and common sense of American enlightenment represented by uh, 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 Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine actually wrote the book Common Sense. Uh, these were the two wings, Protestant faith in the Bible and common sense of American enlightenment on which the American eagle flew, and therefore it surpassed all other civilization and created the greatest nation on earth because the American eagle flew on those two wings. Now, those two wings, of course, were cultivated here in Europe, so that's true of Europe as well, that it flew past all other civilizations because it flew on those wings uh, of uh, 
faith in the Bible, and common sense. The common sense party is too impotent to create, or was too impotent, too weak to create universities and colleges. The party of faith uh, established the, uh, nurtured the West intellectually in terms of education, school, and universities. So in America, all the Christian universities, all the universities and colleges were created by the church. But the common sense party took over the institutions that uh, the church had established, the party of faith had established, and began to clip the first wing of American eagle that the Bible is myth. Now the reality was that common sense was myth. We have uh, friends, secular Indian Americans. Parents believe that it is common sense that marriage should be one man, one woman. This is common sense. There are secular children who are college going. They believe that their parents are bigots. Uh, marriage should be between two lovers. What has gender got to do with it? This is common sense that if two women love each other, they should be married. So parents have one set of common sense. Children have exactly the opposite common sense. What is common sense? Common sense is a myth. It was a myth invented uh, in Scottish Enlightenment by a Christian apologist, Thomas Reed. He invented the myth of common sense to try and save God and save science because Hume and Immanuel Kant in Germany before that had... Um, uh, demonstrated that logic cannot prove God, logic or rationalism cannot prove science. So in order to save God and save science, uh, Reed invented the myth of common sense. But common sense really was the shadow, the Bible was the reality. The American eagle and Europe in fact did fly on two wings of Protestant faith in the Bible and Catholic faith in the Bible and common sense because reality and shadow do coexist. They do walk together, they do fly together and can fly together. But once the one wing of Bible collapsed, the reality collapsed, shadow has automatically collapsed. Now Europe and America cannot do understand what love is, what marriage is, what sex is, what gender is, what justice is, what law is. Uh, the common sense is collapsing, and that's why the eagle is in a free fall. So this book is seeking to look back into the history to uh, recover the reality without which the shadow disappears and is disappearing, and the West is becoming a laughing stock for the world. Thank you.